The blood of Jesus, God's Son, purifies us from all sin. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our gospel reading for this past Sunday, which was the fifth Sunday in Lent. We're looking at Luke chapter 20, verses 9 to 15a, where Luke writes, now this is Jesus' parable of the workers in the vineyard, the tenants in the vineyard. Jesus went on to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers, and went away for a long time. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants so they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant, but that one also they beat and treated shamefully and sent away empty-handed. He sent still a third, and they wounded him and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my son whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they talked the matter over. This is the heir, they said. Let's kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. My dear friends in Christ, Jesus told this parable on Tuesday of Holy Week, just a couple days before his crucifixion. And with these words, well, in those who were listening to him included his disciples, also included the Jewish lead leaders, the Jewish religious leaders. And what Jesus was doing with these words is he was warning those people who were supposed to be faithful workers in God's vineyards, but they were tragically out for their own interests and not for God's interests. They were supposed to be his faithful workers, and this parable was definitely speaking against them. Well, in the parable, Jesus said, a man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers, and went away for a long time. God is the man who planted the vineyard, and that vineyard would be God's chosen people. The farmers who were supposed to take care of the vineyard, they were the Jewish leaders. And as I said, unfortunately, when God rented that vineyard out to his workers, when God put those Jewish leaders in charge over there, they caused him a lot of difficulties. Well, the parable continues. At harvest time, the landowner sent a servant to the tenants so they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant, but that one also they beat and treated shamefully and sent away empty-handed. He sent still a third, and they wounded him and threw him out. As I said, these tenants, they specifically refer to the Jewish religious leaders who rejected God's true servants, the prophets. And think of prophets like Elijah and Jeremiah. Those prophets, they should have been received by the Israelites with open arms because they were sharing God's word with the people. And really what the purpose was, of them going to the people is to preach God's word to them. And the Israelites could have been so richly blessed by prophets like Elijah, Jeremiah, and, and others, of course. The Israelite religious leaders, tragically, though, they rejected those prophets and they also rejected God's son when God sent him into the world to, to be our savior, to live and die for us and pay for our sins. Well, in the parable, Jesus said, then the owner of the vineyard said, what shall I do? I will send my son whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they talked the matter over. This is the heir, they said, let's kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. It's just so sad that they rejected Jesus because 
they could have been so richly blessed by him. God had difficulties when he rented his vineyard to those Jewish leaders. They were difficult tenants, difficult tenants, and he still has difficulties with his tenants today. You and I, well, we're, we're sinners. We're the tenants today, we could say. We too are oftentimes difficult tenants. The Jewish leaders, what they were basically saying is, yes, we know what the prophets are saying. We know what Jesus is saying, but we want to do things our way. We want to do things the way we want to do things. And the fact of the matter is, is that we're tempted to do the same thing, to say the same things. We could say, for example, oh, I know that over drinking, that drunkenness, that those are sins, but let's not say it's a sin. Let's just say it's a disease and try to get away with that. We could also say, sure, God says that sex outside of marriage between one man and one woman we know that God says that that's wrong, but let's just view it as being an alternate, a more acceptable, more liberated view of things. Or we could also say, I know that God expects me to have him in the number one position in my life, but there are so many other things that have to take precedence in my life that how can I possibly have God in that number one position that he wants? When God tells us what he wants us to do, the fact of the matter is that our, our sinful nature is going to object to that. We have that sinful nature that wants us to be difficult tenants too. Our sinful nature, it doesn't want us to submit to God's will. Our, our sinful nature is always saying, who is this God who thinks he can tell me what to do? That's what my sinful nature is saying. That's what your sinful nature is tempting you to believe all the time as well. And whenever our sinful nature would tempt us to think that way, let's remember why God has the right to tell us what to do and not to do. Let's remember who God is. I mean, he is the almighty God. He has created us and, and well, when we sinned, what he did is he sent his son to be our savior. He sends the Holy Spirit working through the word of God to call us to faith and to make us believing children of God. We are difficult tenants, but think about what God does. Think about what God does. He only has our best, our eternal interests at heart. And knowing that he has our best interests at heart, well, that means that we who often can be difficult tenants will want to be faithful workers in God's kingdom, serving our God who has so perfectly served us. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, please keep on using us so that you are getting your work done, so that through word and sacraments we would be growing in our faith and reaching more and more souls with the gospel so the Holy Spirit can work on their hearts. Lord, help each of us to be not the difficult tenants Satan and our sinful nature want us to be, but faithful workers in your vineyard that you, want, that, that you want us to be and that you will help us to be. We pray in Jesus, our Savior's name. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Good to have you joining me for this devotion today. Maybe you notice already that, well, Sunday is Palm Sunday and our church is already decorated for that 
wonderful day when we think about Jesus entering into Jerusalem and the people saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining me for the devotion today. God bless and keep you.